Hi, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a tutorial on this beautiful diamond star quilt. Um, my friend did this a while back. I've had this for a while in my house, and I begged her if I could do a custom job on it. Sometimes I take free work, and um, the reason I do free work is because I want to challenge myself design-wise. I want to do some different feathering. I want to practice. I want to push myself to do something that I've never done. And so I asked her if I could have this quilt. And the reason I liked it is because I love the white. To me, it seems a little bit modern, but I also like the size of it. Um, I also like the challenge of it. How do you mark uh, on this quilt and make a design on it? Especially when the pinwheels and the stars are such awkward and weird how to place a design on them. So I figured out a design. And what I did is initially I marked everything from the star and the pinwheel a fourth off. And then as I was playing around, I found a grid and a design that I liked. And so here you see me. I have initially all that fourth mark all out. And I'm going all the way around the quilt marking a half inch off so that I have kind of a almost like a rope effect going around my design. And inside I'm going to go ahead and feather it. Now I'm marking my quilt. Let me just say this. Marking your quilt is not pretty looking, as you can see. You're bent over. You're hunched over. This quilt literally is folded in half. It's 110 by 110. I don't have a design wall. And even if I did have a design wall, I don't think I would have the space to put this quilt and hang it up so I could do all the markings. So initially what I did is I folded it in half, I got my center and put a diamond there and I'm gonna show me quilting that and um, in a minute. And then when I saw that I really liked that design, then I went ahead and brought the quilt off my machine and put it on the floor and start marking it like you see me here. Um, I love these uh, water soluble marking pens because initially um, there were some areas and you're going to see me in a minute where I go back and fix some areas. What I like about it is if I hated the design that I put on this machine, I can go ahead and just get water and dissolve the whole thing and start fresh. Sometimes you just want to start fresh. Whatever idea you put on the fabric just does not work for you. And as you see me here in this video, I'm like looking at spacing and placement and I'm having to go back and refix something what I like about these water solubles and I did a little video on it is you go back and remove those marks that you don't like and you don't have to redo like on the friction pin I would have to re-iron the markings completely off and with this water soluble all I had to do is get like a batting that was wet and just go back over the areas that I didn't like and to make um to give me a cleaner vision of my marking lines so that when I get on the machine I don't get confused and what I did because sometimes I do a lot of marking and a lot of quilting for a period of time and then I walk away from it for like a week or two and so this is a long project and they do have segments of time frame and so I want to make sure that my markings are clear when I go back on the machine and I'm not confused and well why did I do that and why did I place that and um, this water soluble pen is really awesome because if you, I wanted to tomorrow and say, you know what, my idea really sucked. I don't want to do it anymore. I can go ahead and spray it with water and start over and start fresh. But in a minute, I'm going to start some videos about um, how I did stitch in the ditch on these marking lines. You're going to see me um, marking these lines on my ruler, meaning not stitching in the ditch, but using my line to create that uh, the design that I want and using my stitch in the ditch ruler. And so in a minute, I'm going to go into that video as I'm done marking. And then you're going to see me quilting the inside. So here I am getting my table under my... Um, bringing that table plate on my long arm and making sure that I have it on there. I have some issues with this plate. I don't know if it's a gamel issue or what, that sometimes it kind of jams on me as I'm going in different positions in the on the quilt. And you'll see it where I'm having to shake the machine because it's getting a little bit stuck. And so here I am starting. This, I use the friction pen to mark my lines. And I'm using the stitch in the ditch ruler and I'm lining it up to the line as you see me here. And in a minute, you're going to see me hesitate because um, for some reason on my machine, it kind of gets jammed and that's where I'm pulling it. And 
here I am going back where I was sewing. I went up like three stitches and started sewing back down. And you see me following that line. And um, I'm not stitching in the ditch per se, but I am using that line as if I was stitching in the ditch. And here you see me following that red line to mark um, those design spaces. And let me say this. Um, I just had to finish this area because I, I did the line grids and I quilted them on the bottom and I was just finishing the top as you see me doing that. And now I'm going in and filling in with feathers and echoes on this space. I went ahead and I'm using my black light. I really have found an issue with um, quilting on white on white. Something with satin because I, the satin itself has a reflective element. So when I'm quilting white on satin, I don't need to use a black light. But I noticed because this fabric really blends very well to white, I've noticed that the easiest way for me to see is using that black light while I'm doing my quilting because I really had a hard time using that uh, regular light to see my stitching. And here I am stitching and I'm going to go in a minute and I'm going to start echoing. Now, um, my stitch length again, it's 15 by 14. And usually I use uh, 15 uh, stitches per square inch. I'm stitch regulated. Um, I don't know, I can't do continuous stitch. I think it goes too fast for me. If you noticed, I am having some issues quilting it because I don't have that pillow call creating, that pillow that I have creating that drag. And so sometimes the machine kind of does some weird um, stitches that I don't like. Um, but what I wanted to do is just go ahead and have a video of the quilting. No one's going to see your mistakes. Honestly, uh, I think I see my mistakes more than anybody else will see them. I guess because I have my face to the nose, uh, my face so close to the machine. And um, I'm seeing all the mistakes and all the mishaps. But here it is quilted. And this is part of the design. I really do hope you like this tutorial. And I hope uh, you hit like and subscribe.